So the next bit of evidence of the solar wind would be these things called auroras, which you may have heard of before. So just like the, uh, the comet tails, as evidence of the solar wind, well, so are the auroras. In fact, the auroras are much more visual to us that the solar wind is happening. And there's some, some paradoxes in here. They're very beautiful, but very dangerous, as we'll see. Okay. So as we saw in the last video, sometimes when the sun gets really mad, no one knows why, the so-called so CMEs come off. The coronal mass ejections come off. There are huge solar storms where the sun is literally taking parts of its mass and blowing it out into outer space. And yes, they travel towards all the unsuspecting planets, it just sort of goes out in all directions. And what this graphic shows you here is the Earth sitting right here, basically in the path of one of these big coronal mass ejections. And so the question is, how is it that we can live if the sun does this once in a while, remembering what, that what the coronal mass ejection really is, is just a bunch of charges, you know, protons and electrons and electrons and protons and just stuff, just plasma basically, just being hurled through outer space right at our planet. How is it we're able to survive this? So what I need to bring you through is some logic to describe what this blue thing is around the Earth. So at the moment, uh, we don't quite know what it is, but it looks like a shield almost. Looks like a shield. We got to see what this is about. These are what the auroras look like, and they go through other names that you might have heard of before the northern or southern lights. And you can see why they're called lights because if you were at the proper region of the earth and you looked up at the sky, you'd see these beautiful lights sort of going on just in the sky above you. It just doesn't look like anything you've ever seen before. And it's not pollution, it's not gas, it's not a cloud, it's not some laser being shot or anything like that. You can even see the auroras from outer space here. This is shot from the um, International Space Station, I believe. And the thing about the auroras that sort of ties into our story and our logic here, as we'll see, is that the reason why they're called the northern or southern lights is because you have to be really far north or south to see them. So if the Earth is sort of looks like this, and here's the equator, and maybe here's the North Pole and the South Pole, typically the regions where you're going to see the auroras are going to be sort of near the poles, like maybe up there or up there. So you have to be at the North Pole or South Pole or very far north in Alaska maybe to see them. Because, you know, Alaska is very far north. Or maybe Australia. Because Australia is very far south. So you, it doesn't sort of happen, say, over North America. It has before, but you, that's not the most common place to see them. So there's some piece to the puzzle about northern and southern, so keep that in mind. So what I'm going to show you next, then, is a video that begins to get you thinking about something called a magnetic field. So it turns out the reason why these auroras exist is because of something called the magnetic field or a magnetic field that the Earth generates. So take a look at this quick video clip and then we'll go on from there. Okay, hi students. So we're trying to talk about auroras and how they form, but there's a bit of logic I need to take you through in order for you to understand the auroras and the logic that starts with magnets. Now, I think you kind of know what magnets are. You probably play with them in school, but they just attract metal. So I have some paper clips here, which are made out of metal. And of course, if I bring the magnet near the paper clip, it sort of attracts it and you can pick it up. And I think you've seen all these sorts of things before. You can hold a few paper clips together like that. But the most interesting part about this that you need to understand in order to get these auroras and the solar winds sort of hashed out is watch very carefully what happens as I just bring the magnet close to the paper clip. So by close, I mean there's this intervening space in between here where the magnet isn't quite touching the paper clip. But as I bring it by, I don't need to actually touch the magnet onto the paper clip in order to see some effect. Like even if I just sort of move the magnet around like this, did you see how the paper clip sort of jumped over to the magnet? Let me do it one more time. So closer and see there the magnet's kind of moving. See how the paper clip's kind of moving as I move the magnet? But let me go a little closer, closer, clo like that. So see the paper clip abruptly jumps onto the magnet, but I never actually touch the paper clip to the magnet. 
Now, why does that happen? Well, it's because in this region right here, between the magnet or coming out of the magnet is something called a magnetic field. So all in this region right here is something called a magnetic field. And what is a magnetic field? Well, it's just something that's produced by a magnet. That's what magnets do. They sort of fill space around them with a magnetic field. So as I bring this magnet closer, the paperclip gets more and more immersed in this magnet's magnetic field till it gets sucked on and pulls in. Okay. So that's sort of the nature of a magnetic field, which I need you to understand. Can okay, we move the paperclips out of the way? And the next thing I want to show you then are these little magnetic filings. So what these are, magnetic filings, just sort of ground up scrap metal, I think. You can buy it and they're just uh, very fine scrap metal. And of course, these are going to respond to the magnetic field too because they're made out of metal. And you can sort of see what the effect is going to have here. As I sort of move it around, you see the magnetic filings are just sort of moving all over the place and some of them are attracting to the magnet and sort of making a big mess like that. But what I'm going to show you now for sure is that hopefully you can get from this that the magnetic filings, when they are in near a magnetic field, they're small enough that they'll sort of individually move in response to that magnetic field. So for instance, if I try to clean this off just a little bit here, get these filings back off the magnet, right? Something like that. You can tell that the magnetic filings are so small, they see them sort of moving as I wave the magnet over. They're all sort of moving around. You see that? Hopefully you can see those magnetic filings moving around. That's part of our logic here. So I'll leave it at that. But what I want to convince you of now, in the next step of logic, is that these magnetic filings are small enough that whenever there's a magnetic field around them, they can move. Okay, you don't have to touch the magnetic filings and they're they're small and light enough that they don't they're not sort of as heavy as a paperclip that really needs a good pull before they'll move. They're so little itty bitty that they'll just sort of move in response to a magnetic field. Okay, so please try to remember that. Whenever you see a magnetic filing move, it must mean there's a magnetic field nearby. Okay, keep that in mind and we'll go on to the next video.